everyone. Uh, today we will go through the fifth recitation since we went online. And uh, I want to start with uh, an interesting problem uh, from uh, homework uh, 6, I believe, problem 3.29. And I say it's interesting because it, it requires a bit of some kind of trick to it if you want to solve it in a general way, right? So, so uh, the problem has to do, of course, with, uh, as you might know, has to do with a cylinder. So this is a cylinder, right? From the, for, this is uh, from one side, from the other side. Oh, you see the cylinder, and then there's the center of the cylinder, right? And then, and then um, you're asked to find uh, the uh, field intensity at different points in the uh, relate as related to the cylinder. So you're asked to find the field intensity uh, inside the cylinder, and then outside the cylinder along the axis, of course. Right, and at the edge of the cylinder, right? And the question is, can we derive some kind of general formula that allows us to uh, that allows us to calculate the electric field at any point along the axis of the of the cylinder? And and indeed we can, right? And this is what I will show you during this uh, while solving this problem. So I have my cylinder. Let me actually draw it more cylindrically. It just kind of looks like this. Right, and it's a cylinder with a uniform charge distribution. So at any volume element, right, and uh, this is, by the way, the axis, the axis, and I want to find the field at a general point P, right? E at uh, uh, at P. Okay, and the cylinder has length L and has uh, uh, the side of the cylinder, the, 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 the caps of the cylinder, the circles at the caps of the cylinder have radius L over 2. So the first step as usual, is to devise a coordinate system. The coordinate system I want to devise is the following. I'm going to uh, designate this uh, direction as the z-axis, and I want to designate uh, perpendicular to the z-axis, I have the r-axis. I'm going to use cylindrical coordinates. Right. And the charge in this volume element is going to be rho v dv prime. Remember, we use the prime uh, designation whenever we are dealing with a source material. And the coordinates of this uh, uh, volume element is going to be r prime, phi prime, z prime in uh, uh, cylindrical coordinates. right? And then uh, I need to point, pinpoint an origin, right? So my origin is going to be this point, 0, 0, Zero. This is the point with z is equal zero, uh, right? Well, it's kind of tricky calling because this is what, what does it mean to have an angle of zero, right? If, if r is zero, that's all that, that you need. You know, in a cylindrical coordinate, zero 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 is the same as zero pi over two uh, zero, really. Yeah, yeah so, so you know that, you, you know that the angle doesn't matter. But I'll, I'll take this point to be my uh, origin. Okay, and then let me see if I can get some color here. Okay, so I want to find, uh, what can I say about the field at point P? And I want P to be general, so, so I want P to be possibly inside the cylinder or outside the cylinder or on the edge of the cylinder. So what can we see, say in general about the field at any point P? Well, what we can say is the following. From symmetry, uh, if I 
take right if I take uh, let, let me draw this way up here actually so this is the volume element up here right it has those co this coordinates and this charge density and and uh, this element of course is r prime away from the axis it has coordinate r prime uh, phi prime and z prime right from the symmetry if i uh, draw a line from this charge element to the point i would get a field you know e1 that looks like this but then each element here is going to have an opposite element in the, in the opposite direction and if I draw a line from that element that will give me E2 right and then when I sum E1 and E2 the, the uh, uh, perpendicular components are going to cancel out and then all I end up with is the components that are in the Z direction so the field E will always be in the Z direction we can instantly tell that from symmetry at least along the, the, the center axis of the cylinder. For every volume element, you can find the opposite volume element that's going to uh, count, you know, that's going to uh, co cause a cancellation of the, of the uh, uh, components that are in this direction and, in the, and then in this direction. Okay. So we've done that a lot. I mean, we all we've exploited symmetry a lot under those conditions. Okay, so what is the angle theta here? Right, we can use this angle theta. So all we need to do solve for really is the component uh, along the z-axis. How do we solve for the component along the z-axis? Well, we just we just find the general e vector, and then and then project it into the z-axis. Right, and only find that, only integrate for that, and that gives us the total field in, in, in the z-axis direction. So in this case, I have this angle theta. This angle theta. What is what is this angle theta? This angle theta, I can uh, uh, find it from the geometry of the problem. Right. So what is cosine theta? What is the cosine of this angle? The cosine of this, this angle is is uh, uh, this length here which is uh, let's assume the point here is 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 has has uh, coordinates r phi z so the cosine theta is going to be z minus z prime this distance here over this distance the hypotenuse which is what which is going to be r prime squared plus z minus z prime squared square root okay right and we said from symmetry e will be in in uh, always will be in the oh but this is by the way d d e1 d e d e2 okay those are infinitesimal elements of the field we still haven't summed up over the whole source to get the complete field okay so we're only interested in calculating the magnitude of the field in the e direction in the z direction right what is that equal to here we will apply uh, coulomb's law right so that is equal to the charge rho dv prime over 4 pi epsilon naught and then i, I want to put in r squared right what is r squared in this case it's this distance right so that distance is going to be uh, what's the hypotenuse? It's it's square it's uh, square root r prime squared plus blah blah blah. Yeah, we need to take the square root. And we need to square it, so we end up with r prime squared plus z minus z prime squared. Right. So this is the square root. Sorry, this is r squared. Right. Now this is this field e1, but I want to find the field in the z direction, so I need to multiply it by cosine theta. So in this case, I multiplied by cosine theta. What is cosine theta? Cosine theta is this thing up here, z minus z prime over r prime plus z minus z prime squared. So this thing here is cosine theta. Okay. 
um, so I end up with DE equals rho this is a volume charge density rho V dV prime Z minus Z prime over 4 pi epsilon naught so here I have uh, square root uh, squared times another square root so this becomes square root cubed which is uh, power 3 over 2 so I end up with R prime squared plus Z minus Z prime squared power 3 over 2 okay what is dv in this case dv prime in this case is uh, since we're dealing with cylindrical coordinates the volume element is going to be r prime dr prime d phi prime dz prime okay and then we end up with de equals rho v z minus z prime r prime dr prime d phi prime dz prime over uh, 4 pi epsilon naught r prime squared plus z minus z prime squared 3 over 2 okay so this is all just the application of uh, coulomb's law and then we integrate over the over the volume of the cylinder so uh, what i get is now rho v is constant right 4 pi epsilon naught is constant and then I'm integrating over V prime what's left what's left is is R prime Z minus Z prime over R prime squared plus Z minus Z prime squared power 3 over 2 I'm going to start with dr prime d phi prime then dz prime okay and I can separate out those integrals so I start with integrating with respect to z right z is going uh, let's see where is z going from um, z should be going right z is the final one right z prime is the final one right so where is z prime uh, uh, right we, we, we are we are summing we, we are um, we should be integrating over the source right where does the source end the source ends after uh, after z equals l right so this is here z equals zero and this is here z equals l so uh, summing over z prime the source ends at z equals l so we need to sum from 0 to l integrate from 0 to l uh, and i can take z minus z prime out it's a constant with respect to the inner integrals so i can take it out z minus z prime and then i integrate over th uh, phi prime which is 0 to 2 pi right there is no phi prime there then I integrate from 0 to L over 2. Now I'm integrating over, over R. R goes from 0 to L over 2. So I integrate from 0 to L over 2 of R prime over R prime uh, squared plus Z minus Z prime squared 3 over 2 dr prime d phi prime dz prime okay i can do the integration with respect to phi very easily there is no function of of phi here i mean none of those uh, two functions are functions of phi so i can just integrate and i get a constant two phi two pi so i get rho v and i get two pi here but two, two pi cancels with the two pi in the denominator so i end up with two epsilon naught done right and then i integrate zero to l z minus z prime right and then now i want to integrate i want to do this integral i know that this integral whenever i have you know x over x squared plus uh, something i know that this integral should equal minus one over square root 
I mean, I, I know I know this in Degra, I could have looked at the table, or I could have done it by hand, but it's uh, pretty well known integral, whether I got it from a table or done it by hand. Right, so minus 1 over r prime squared plus z minus z prime squared goes from 0 to L over 2 dz prime. Okay, and here comes the tricky part a little bit. Uh, uh, let's, let's plug this in. Let's plug L over 2 and 0. So what happens... Yeah, this could this point that I'm going to mention now could trip you up in a lot of problems if if you're not careful. Right, so I go from zero to L, integrating over the source, and then here I integrate it. I mean, I, I, I only I already found the integral, indefinite integral for this term, right, and I need to substitute it in there. So what happens when I substitute L over two? I end up with minus one over square root. L over 2 squared, right, plus Z minus Z prime Z minus Z prime squared that's uh, uh, that term and then I substitute instead of R prime I substitute uh, 0. So I end up so minus minus plus 1 over I end up with something curious I end up with 1 over it's I put in 0 for r prime squared I end up with 1 over square root z minus z prime squared okay now what you could do here is instead of you could take the square root of squared and you end up with 1 over z minus z prime if you do that you will get erroneous results when you try to use the equation in its most general form to find the field uh, outside the cylinder and inside the cylinder on the axis. We need to, what you need to recognize here is that when you take a quantity and you square it and you square root it, if, if the quantity started negative, you lose that negative sign. If you take a negative quantity, you square it, you get a positive value. You take the square root, you start getting a positive value. By definition, whenever you see a square root, that's a positive square root, right? So the real way to express this thing, uh, uh, this quantity squared and then, and, and then uh, square root, this, what is this thing? This thing is the absolute value of z minus z, z prime. Yeah, take a quantity, square it, square root it, that's the absolute value of the quantity. This is the ex correct expression you need to put in there uh, that would allow you to, to properly uh, find the general answer. Okay. Now all that remains is, is bring that in, z minus z prime in. Right and, and and continue the integration. The final part of the integration is the integrator with respect to z prime. Right, so I'm going from zero to l of z minus z prime over magnitude z minus z prime minus z minus z prime over square root l over two squared plus z minus z prime squared dz prime, okay? Uh, all right, so we need to evaluate this integral, right? Rem remember the, the cylinder and z starts from zero and then z and ends at L with the material and then we're interested in the field at point P, which could be Right, uh, uh, sorry, so, so z prime starts with zero, z prime ends at L as far as the material is concerned. This is the coordinate system for the material. For general point in space, z equals p, you know, at a certain point. Let's see. So, so uh, this is the coordinate, z coordinate of the point p. No, so, so the field, the value of the field now is going to depend, how we do this integral is going to depend on where z is. z could be smaller than L. The point we're interested in finding the field at could be inside the material, or z could be larger than or equal to l. The, the point where we are interested in finding the field 
at could be outside of the material. Right? So each one of those is going to give us a different value for E. So let's start with, with Z outside the material, Z larger than, equal, than or equal to L. So E in this case is going to be rho V over 2 epsilon. What happens when Z is larger than Z prime? Right? So what happens when Z is larger than or equal to L? That means it doesn't matter what, what Z prime is, Z will always be larger than Z prime. So this condition implicitly means that Z always larger than Z prime. Because Z prime is constrained to the material, Z prime can only go from 0 to L. And from the get-go, Z, Z is larger than L. So z will always give you larger than z prime. So that means that this expression will always going to be uh, z minus z prime is always going to be positive. So z minus z prime, which is always positive, divided by the magnitude of z minus z prime is going to be just one. So the integral that I have to do is going to be one minus z minus z prime over square root l over two uh, squared plus z minus z prime squared dz prime okay so uh, oh sorry all right so um, yeah what I was trying to do okay we want to evaluate this integral now so this is rho uh, epsilon naught rho v over 2 epsilon naught and then I, we know how to evaluate this this is z prime and then this is again you can get from a, think about it do it or go to an integral integral table but we know that this we can find out that this integral is going to be half square root l squared plus 4 z minus z prime squared right? i didn't go to an integration table i just went to mathematica and evaluated that integral right? so uh, substituting ln i end up with this expression for e Right, this is for z larger than or equal to L. So E is going to equal rho V over 2 epsilon naught L plus half L squared plus 4 Z minus L squared minus half Z prime is 0, so it's going to be L squared plus 4 z squared so that would be the expression now what about if z is smaller than l z uh, yeah if z is smaller than l meaning that the point i'm interested in finding the field at is within the material this is where the point is so uh, when we're doing that integral across z prime sometimes z prime will be smaller than z in this region other times z prime is going to be larger than z so this is z here and this is z prime smaller than z and in this region z prime is larger than z right so uh, so here we have then when we do e we have to to divide the integral we have to divide this integral this integral we have to divide it into two integrals we have to divide it into the integral where 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 this term is is plus one and then the other uh, interval of the integral will will have this term be minus one okay so if i do that this is going to be rho v over two epsilon naught the integral is going to go from zero to z first so z prime is going to go to z as z prime is going from 0 to z in that region uh, uh, in that region what happens z is larger than z prime z is larger than z prime so this whole thing is going to go to 1 so i end up with uh, 1 minus z minus z prime over square root l over 2 squared plus z minus z prime squared right dz prime plus the other portion of the integral which is the integral going from z to l in that region uh, the z minus z prime over z 
uh, magnitude uh, over magnitude z minus z prime absolute z minus z prime is going to be negative right because in that region uh, uh, z prime is larger than z so i end up with minus one minus z minus z prime over square root l over two squared plus z minus z prime squared dz prime right and then all i have to do right now All I have to do right now is find, uh, 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 yeah, evaluate those two integrals in a similar manner. I mean, I'll get the same thing, right? So, I mean, I still, the integral will be the same. It will look like an expression like this, right? So it's going to be, okay, so let's start with this integral. All right, so this is going to be uh, uh, z. So instead of z prime, I put z, right? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, we, we already evaluated this actually. Right? This is going to be the same thing that I get. Uh, this is going to be the same expression that I get here, but now I'm integrating it between what? Between uh, 0 and z. So I need to plug in, in this expression, I need to plug in 0, and then I need to plug in. Uh, 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 z right that's the yeah that's what we need to do right the integral of this thing is going to be this thing i need then i need to plug in z and then i plug in zero sorry it goes from zero to z so i plug in z i end up with z plus l over two right so i end up with z here plus if i instead of z prime plug in z i get zero i get uh, l squared square root this is just l l is always positive so i don't have to write magnitude of l or absolute of l so it's going to be z prime plus l over two then minus i plug in zero for z prime i end up with minus half l squared plus four z prime right plus now the the other integral plus this integral this integral is the same as the other integral only now i have instead of uh, instead of z prime here i have minus z prime so i evaluate this integral at, at l and at z i end up with uh let me do it let me write it down so it's going to be the same but it's going to be now minus z prime that this integral right plus half l squared plus four z minus z prime squared going from z to l So this is going to be rho v over epsilon, 2 epsilon naught, z plus l over 2 minus half l squared plus 4 z squared. And then uh, uh, minus l, and then instead of z prime, I substitute l plus half l squared plus 4 z minus l squared right and then i substitute z minus plus minus minus becomes plus z uh, minus half square root uh, uh, z minus z becomes zero uh, l squared right this whole thing becomes l over 2 actually l squared square root becomes l this whole thing becomes l over 2 so this l over 2 cancels this l over 2 right and then i end up with with 2z minus l plus uh plus those two terms so this is the whole electric field So this is going to be 2z minus l plus half l squared plus 4z minus l minus half l squared plus 4z squared. How do I check that this result makes sense? One way to do that is to notice this should be a very general result. 
uh, uh, so it should work anywhere. Well, one way to one thing to notice is that at the center of the cylinder, the field should be zero, right? Because any field that comes from any 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 element here, going go in this direction, I could find always, right, an element uh, here adjacent that goes in this direction. I end up with a field going in this direction. Those two elements, I could find their mirror image in the other half. Always can find the mirror image on the other half of the cylinder. And those will give me fields that go in this direction, and those fields, the resultant fields, are going to cancel my my original field. So at the center of the cylinder, the field should always be zero. Well, what happens here if I set z equals l over two? Well, I end up with let's just take this expression, right? I end up with l over two times two. I end up with l minus l. That cancels out plus half square root l squared plus 4 z minus l z is l over 2 l over 2 minus l is oh sorry squared this has squared in it l minus 2 minus l is minus l over 2 squared that gives me l over 4 right so that gives me l squared right and then minus half l squared plus 4 z squared z is l over 2 l over so it becomes l squared over 4 l squared right so this term also cancels this term i end up with zero so e is going to be zero at the center of the uh, cylinder and that, that that confirms the calculation it is an interesting calculation and it has this tricky part about when you find when you try to find the general expression uh, for it, you have to be mindful of, of, of terms. Whenever you see terms where you are squaring something and then finding the square root, you shouldn't just blindly do the square root. You should be aware that an absolute value uh, shows up. Yeah, this is the whole point of, of why I wanted to do this problem, because you encounter this, this interesting uh, trick, so to speak, mathematical trick that you have to be... Uh, uh, aware of okay all right now i want to jump to example well, let me example uh, 8.12 which is an example uh, of calculating the uh, magnetic vector potential Okay, so and I want to show you that uh, you know similar to the electrostatic case where in many cases calculating the electrical potential is easier than calculating the field directly. So uh, here I will show that calculating the the ma magnetic vector potential is easier than calculating in general is easier than calculating the a magnetic field directly so example 8.12 has to do with calculating the field due to a short segment of conductor wire with a, with a, uh, with a certain current i flowing through it right and we want to find the field for three different uh, points with respect to that uh, short conducting strip or, or wire so we want to take the midpoint right some distance h and find the a field at that midpoint of course if this is uh, an element here and this is dl prime a is always going to be in the direction of dl prime so we said that was the big simplification of, of a is that it, it always follows uh, uh, the directed uh, segment on the source right so um, the second thing that we want to solve is a special case where, where where we are at the edge the point we're interested in is at the edge of the of the segment and then the final part is solving the problem in general, like any point, any random point in space. Okay, so uh, 
Okay, so let's start with part A. So part A, uh, first let's remind our, ourselves what's the bios of a law expressed uh, as expressed for the vector potential. So the bios of a law as expressed for the vector potential is u naught i over 4 pi integral from the starting point to the ending point dl prime over r minus r prime magnitude so it's just the magnitude between the element the magnitude of the distance between the, the uh, current element the current filament element and, and, and the point in space right uh, this is of course in Weber per meter okay so <clears throat> so let me set it up as usual I set up a coordinate system x y z and then I center let me center my 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 wire such that its center is at point zero 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 right and then and then here z prime equals a here and z prime here equals minus a meaning the length of the segment is 2a right and then so we've centered this and we want to find the field at point p which is uh, a point uh, the point p is at, at uh, h this distance is h right and i'm going to use uh, cylindrical coordinates so h is r essentially and then any phi so it doesn't matter from the symmetry it doesn't matter what the angle is phi any phi will have the same field right the, so all the points at any angle will have the same field as long as they are the same radial distance from the segment and then z is zero okay so we're trying to find the field at this point and then the small element here Is going to be let's say let's take it let's take it to be here right the small element is dl right prime and then i is flowing through uh, uh, the segment okay all right so what's da what's the uh, field the magnetic uh, vector potential due to this one small uh, segment infinitesimal segment of, of the uh, uh, of this rod so it's going to be mu naught i over 4 pi dl hat what's dl hat in this case in this in this sorry dl prime in this case in this uh, coordinate system it's just it's in the z direction right so it's going to be z hat dz prime over and then and then this element here is this distance from the point we're interested in finding the field at this distance here is z prime of course right so this distance is going to be uh, z prime squared plus h squared square root okay so this distance here uh, uh, r minus r hat you know r hat is from here to here sorry r prime is from here to here and then r is going to be uh, 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 from here to the point in space right and that will be r capital which is which will be the distance between the element and the point in space where we are interested in calculating the field that as we said is going to be h squared plus z prime squared okay so the full potential is going to be z hat mu naught i over 4 pi and we integrate from beginning to end we start at minus a and we end at a of dz prime over uh, z prime squared plus h squared okay now we could you know um, calculate this integral or we could just go to the to an integral table right so an integral table 
integration table is gonna give us this as the antiderivative ln z prime plus h plus h squared plus z prime squared right and typically what you see is they're gonna give you uh, uh, the magnitude right so this is gonna be uh, 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 because you cannot have the length of a negative uh, 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 a number right so there is like the, a magnitude there you have to be mindful of that absolute value okay so uh, uh, but that's fine I mean we could assume that for certain ranges it is positive right and then and then uh, calculate uh, we can verify that this is correct so how do I verify this is correct let me take d by dz prime of this, right? I end up with what? 1 over z prime plus... So I'm assuming here I'm taking the derivative for a region where this is positive, right? h squared plus z prime squared. Right? And so this is the derivative of the len, and then the derivative what's inside of what's inside the len. So this gives me 1 plus the derivative of the square root, which is uh, uh, 1 over 2 h squared plus z prime squared, and then the, deriv the derivative of what's inside the square root, which is going to be 2 z prime, 2 cancels with 2, and I end up with this expression, right, and then I uh, sum those two up, right, what happens when I sum those two up, I get h squared plus z prime squared plus z prime over h squared plus z prime squared right so it's this times this this cancels with this and i end up with one over h squared plus z prime squared so i just verified to myself that uh, this thing this antiderivative that i got from the table is is uh, is correct Okay, so now what is the field at this point, at point P? What is point P? Point P, according to our cylindrical coordinates, is the point distance H from the rod, any angle, and Z is zero. Right, so this is going to be Z mu naught I over 4 pi. And then uh, uh, it's this uh, uh, natural log, right? So it's going to be like this natural log evaluated at A minus this natural log evaluated at minus A. But, but what is natural log minus natural log? Right? It's uh, 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 division, right? If you have uh, uh, len something minus len uh, another thing, you know, you know the property len A minus len B equals len A over B. So we're going to use this property, right? And we're going to calculate this as, as len. What's the uh, numerator? It's going to be uh, this antiderivative evaluated at A. So it's going to be here. Z, let me write it down this way. Z prime plus magnitude h squared plus z prime uh, uh, squared right over uh, I'll write the same thing right this is absolute from the definition of the antiderivative and then I'm going to plug in a and minus a so I'm going to plug in a in the uh, uh, numerator and uh, plug in minus a in the denominator so here I have a instead of z prime h squared plus a squared and then I have minus a here let me put it in the other side Right, so there is some minus a here, and then h prime plus uh, minus a squared is just a, so it's going to be h squared 
plus a squared minus a. Weber per uh, meter. Okay, so this will be the value of uh, uh, the field at that uh, center point. Okay, now going to part, let me do this. Okay. Oh, by the way, we don't. Do we need to put the absolute value here? We don't. Why? Why don't we need to do that? Because this value is always going to be larger than one. Why? Because let's say this is a squared square root, right? That's going to be uh, absolute a minus a. So this is going to be zero. But h is has some value, right? So so this whole value is going to always be somewhat a little bit larger than a or you know so always going to be this value is always guaranteed to be larger than a so that means this is going to always going to be positive and this is the numerator is always going to be positive so we can ignore the i mean we could keep the absolute value signs but they're kind of redundant okay so this is part a now we want to go to part b and and uh, find the other case. The other case is with the point being uh, at the end of the road. So let me redraw this. Let me re redraw the coordinate system. Okay. And then I draw my segment, my, my rod. Right. And then, so this is z prime equals a, this is z prime equals minus a, and then I'm at the my point here is at point P, which is at R H equals H, any any angle phi, and then Z now is minus A. That's the point where I'm interested in finding the field at. So this is H, okay? And then I have my element here, DL prime vector, of course, it's, it's in this direction, right? Now, what is this distance? This distance is going to be z prime minus minus a. So this distance is z prime plus a, right? <coughs> and what is this distance now? The r, the big r. This distance is going to be simply h squared now plus z prime plus a squared. Okay? So this is now the statement of the problem. And now I can calculate it right away. H phi minus A. So this is, the, uh, we're calculating at a different point. We're calculating at the point that's, uh, uh, that, that is located in terms of the Z axis uh, and along with the edge. You know, uh, versus previously we were calculating the point at, at the oriented at the mid, middle of the segment. Okay, so this is equal, oh, not equal sign here, the equal is there. Z hat mu naught i over 4 pi. We're going from minus a to a, dz prime over h squared plus z prime plus a squared. Okay, so this is very, the integral is very similar. Uh, to the previous integral, all we have to do is go back to our integral table and remember, and, and, and I mean, I just, I didn't go to any particular integral table. I just, you know, went to Google and typed in integral table and then found the first one and, 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 and it has a bunch of integrals and one of the integrals that I have is this integral, dx over square root. Right. Remember, I don't expect you to do integration from uh, scratch. Uh, you can always uh, refer to an integral table. Right. So this is going to be x squared plus minus a, some constant, d, dx, from the integral table that equals len absolute x plus x squared plus minus a. So that's a very general formula. Of course, there is plus C or something, right? But we can ignore that constant. So let's uh, take this integral. We're not finding this exactly. We're finding this kind of integral. 
h squared plus z prime plus a squared. So let's do substitution. Let's say u equals z prime plus a. That means that du equals dz prime. So that means my integral turns to be dz, d, du over square root z prime plus a is u. So this is going to become u squared plus h squared. Right, and so the integral according to the table is going to be ln u plus u squared plus h squared, absolute value. Right, so uh, going back to this integral, I want to now substitute back with the values of u. So this is h squared plus z prime plus a squared, that's going to be ln absolute value z prime plus a plus squared root z prime squared oh i'll, I'll just uh, 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 take the u which is z prime plus a and just expand it it's going to become z prime squared plus 2 a z prime right square the first term square the second term and then 2 times the first uh, times the second plus a squared plus h squared All right let me collect the constants together so h a h squared plus a squared i'll collect them as one constant h squared plus a squared All right absolute value so this is the antiderivative of the integral now we just have to evaluate it at a and minus a and since uh, this turns into a subtraction between two logarithms we can turn the subtraction subtraction as we said into a division so a in this case is going to be and let me write the expression first and then substitute the value of of, of the integral limits in it mu naught i over 4 pi and then what did i say uh yeah i'm integrating from minus a to, to a so let me write it down first then magnitude z prime plus a i'm just turning the, the subtraction subtra subtraction now subtraction into division that's the property of the len plus 2a z prime plus h squared plus a squared Just writing it down at this point. This is not the solution. Two a z prime plus h squared plus a squared. Okay. So here in the numerator, I want to substitute the first limit, the, the top limit, which is a. So this is going to be z prime is a. A plus a is two a. Right. So this is going to be a squared plus 2a times a 2a squared right this is going to give me 3a squared plus another a squared here so this is going to give me 4a squared plus h squared right so this is going to be 2a plus 4a squared plus h squared. 4a squared plus h squared. Okay, so that's the numerator. Now, what's uh, what about the denominator? That's the lower limit, which is minus a now. So this a already cancels. Minus a squared is just a squared plus 2a z prime a, 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 a times minus a is minus a squared so this is minus 2 a squared right so i have 2a squared minus 2a squared this cancels out i end up with h squared square root h is positive of course so this gives me h square per parameter this is the expression for a at the edge. This is a at point uh, in space at point h. 
any angle minus a. Okay. So we solved for two special cases. Now we want to solve for the uh, general case. What is the general case? The general case is the case where we don't care where the point in space is. It could be at any point. Right? And we could easily solve for the general case. That's fine. If you look at the text, uh, uh, oh, by the way, in, in part A, if you look at the textbook, you see that they have a constant of, of two here, right? Or something, right? There is a difference in a constant, right? Which doesn't matter. Let's say we have a constant here. Let's say everything here is multiplied by, by two, for example. So len something multiplied by a constant is len that same thing plus len a. So that's the basic property of uh, 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 the len, right? So, so uh, oh, by the way, that constant that I'm talking about doesn't show up here. It shows up in the in the in the antiderivative. So the antiderivative, then they calculated it. They have some extra constant, but that extra constant is just the plus c. You know, if I have uh, if I have the two terms here multiplied by two, I can take the two out and and I can turn len this thing times times two to len this thing plus len two. So that factors out as the extra C that anyway could be added to any general antiderivative, right? It does not change the end result. That's what I'm trying to say. So don't confuse, don't be confused when you see that. Okay. Yeah, so I wanted to do the general part now, where the point could be really anywhere. Right? So here I'm going from z prime equals a from z prime equals minus a to z prime equals a and the point is at any general point it's at r phi z right so what does that mean let me take my element my element here dl prime is at what is at zero of course uh, it doesn't matter phi does not matter it's it's at z prime mainly Right, it's uh, symmetric. It's at it says uh, phi could be anything, right? And 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 uh, z is z prime, and then r prime is zero, and then that's the general point. So what is the distance here? What is this distance? Well, it's a triangle, right? So this distance here is going to be r. This distance here is going to be z minus z prime and then this distance here right uh, uh, is going to be r squared plus z minus z prime squared square root that's what the distance is going to be so this general a now at r phi at any point in space is going to be uh, the simplifying aspect here is that is that it doesn't the direction will always follow the direction of dl there's no complication there it doesn't matter whether z is, is less than z prime or higher than z prime the direction is always constant that's a great simplification remember when we did uh, the, the cylinder cylinder with uh, con uh, with uh, rho v in it and we're trying to calculate the electric field there it mattered whether z prime was was larger than z or less than z because the field is changing orientation it could cancel itself you know uh, due to this changing in the, in, 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 in the orientation with respect to the cylinder in this case it doesn't matter because the direction of the vector field will always ma going to match the direction of the l so we don't have to worry about that and then let me write it down. So this is going to be z hat, always in the same direction of L, u naught i over 4 pi, integral from minus a to a dz prime. You can see this is pretty easy stuff, you know, compared to, to how hard it 
could be if we use the full-fledged bios avalo right so this is r squared plus z minus z prime squared now all we need to do now is go, is go back to uh, to our integral formula uh, the formula that we found from the table this one right dx over square root x squared plus a squared equals lin magnitude x plus x squared plus a squared right so in this case this new integral now z minus z prime squared <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry right so we want to do the substitution let u equals z minus z prime what does that mean that means that u equals minus dz prime right so, so that means that this integral turns into the integral of minus the integral of du i have to put in a minus minus to get du here over square root of r squared plus u squared and we know what this integral is this integral is going to be minus len u plus u squared plus r squared i just you know you know i just uh, um, use the integral uh, the indefinite integral that I found from the table then I plug in back the value of u so this integral the indefinite integral turns out to be minus len instead of u I put in z minus z prime plus mag, uh, square root z minus z prime squared plus r squared okay now I want to find this integral from where to where, from minus a to a, right? So I'm, I want to find, let me rewrite this. So this becomes a, the general a, equals z hat mu naught i over 4 pi. And then I'm calculating this from minus a to a, right? Notice this negative sign. So this is still now going to be a division. Right, because I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have this len minus another len, so it's gonna still gonna be a division. But because of this extra minus sign, the first term is gonna be in the denominator, and the second term is gonna be in the in the numerator. It flips because of this minus sign. So let me do the division. It's gonna be len. Let me just use do my usual trick, which just which is just put everything in as is. So it's going to be z minus z prime plus z minus z prime squared plus r squared, and then z minus z prime plus z minus z prime squared plus r squared. Okay. So I'm integrating from minus a to a. So the where does a go? A has when i plug in a i have the minus sign here so so a goes in the denominator that's why so i put in here z minus a right and then here z minus a squared okay and then minus a so it's going to be this thing evaluated at a minus minus becomes plus this thing evaluated at minus a. So this if I, uh, plugging in minus a happens in the numerator. So this is going to be z plus a, right? And then uh, plus a minus minus becomes plus plus a. And this is the general expression. For uh, the vector potential, it's part. It's important here now to to remember the absolute value. Why? Because we don't know when is z z if I mean the signs of the numerator and the denominator might differ, right? 
but uh, the absolute value is part of the definition of, of, the, of the indefinite integral. It's important to, to keep it there, or else you will get error, uh, incorrect results. All right, so this concludes this uh, recitation, and, and we will continue with the uh, magnetics uh, the next couple of lectures. We were almost close to the end of the semester, actually, so... Uh, uh, but I mean, we, we will cover most of the highlights, I think. And uh, uh, yeah, all right, thank you.